This is the Jerusalem Post Zoomcast, J-Post one-on-one. Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Jerusalem Post Zoomcast. I'm your host today, Mayan Hoffman, uh, the he- Head of Strategy and our Senior Health Analyst at the Post. And we have a really uh, special and fortunate opportunity to have with us today, Professor Eliezer Rabinovich, who was just recently elected the President of Europe's Nuclear Research Organizations Council, uh, CERN, Uh, the CERN Council, and uh, I want to thank you so much for being with us. A pleasure. Wonderful. So uh, let's start by uh, understanding just a little bit about you, if that's okay. The first Israeli president of the CERN Council. It's a real triumph, especially considering that the country only became an official member of CERN in 2014. So tell us about your work. What do you specialize in? I I am in the field of uh, high energy physics. And our goal is to find what are the basic constituents of matter and uh, what are the laws which govern it. And we are part of a a breed which have it hardwired in us that uh, somebody owes humanity a simple and concise explanation which can enter on one PowerPoint slide of what are the laws which govern the basic forces and what are the basic constituents. And uh, in many ways over the years, this has been successful, sometimes more, sometimes less. So this is the general field I I study. It's a curiosity driven field. We want to understand how the universe works, what are its basic constituents and what are its basic laws. And uh, more specifically, more uh, technically, this, the tools we use are go under the name quantum field theory or string theory. Fascinating. So now with that, what does it mean to be the president of the CERN Council? You know, what is the Council of CERN, who does the Council of CERN represent, first of all, and uh, what are you going to be doing in this role? So the, the CERN Council is composed out of the 20 delegates from the 23 member states. Uh, Israel is one of the member states and the others are are European uh, without any doubt, let's say. Israel is always a question, how how are we related to Europe exactly or not? But the other 22 are all uh, bona fide uh, European uh, uh, countries. Each country sends two delegates. One is a scientific delegate and one is a, Uh, let's call it a political delegate, it could be the ambassador in Geneva for international organizations. And the role of the council is to define the policy according to which CERN should work in, in the next years. And the role of CERN and its management is to execute that policy. Now, uh, for over 20 years, actually, the policy has been defined about two decades ago, and it was to try and search for the particle called the Higgs particle. And it was also uh, charged in reaching an energy, which is around 14 trillion electron volts, trying to build an accelerator, which uh, will able which is able to reach these energies and be responsible that detectors which would see the results and measure the results of the collision be there. And the role of the council there was more a supervisory role. And the management reported on the successes and difficulties in achieving this goal. And the goal was achieved in the early around 2012. And uh, that the Higgs particle was found. But now, actually, the council must reassume its role as a policymaker. And my responsibility as president of council will be to reach a consensus on what is the future for the next decades uh, of CERN. And everybody agrees that one wants CERN to remain the best place to do experimental high energy physics, the most advanced place, to be the the place where or host the best scientists all over and provide the best technology. But the route uh, on how to reach this way is not yet decided. There are 
different ideas on how this should be done. And the role of the president of council would be to bring them together so we can have a, a chart on how to develop the future of CERN. Very interesting. I'm gonna ask you more about that uh, Higgs particle pretty soon. Um, when do you start, by the way, in your new role and how long do you expect to be president? Uh, well, the president uh, is elected for a period of one year, twice renewable. Um, up to now, all, pres the, all presidents were renewed once they were elected, but we, we'll wait and see if I'm also. Mm -hmm. So the minimum probably is one year and the maximum is three. Okay, and you started already in the role or you're starting no, soon? No, I was, the election was just uh, a very short while ago. Uh, I think on the 24th of September, and uh, I, the president's tenure starts on the 1st of January of each year. Amazing. So what makes CERN so special and so interesting? You know, everyone is extremely excited here. All of us, uh, all the different newspapers wrote about it. Why is CERN so important? Okay, well, CERN represents, I would say, two things. On a scientific level, it is at the very frontier. Uh, you ask yourself if you want to go to space and you don't have the money to pay the, the private uh, space, then you either go to Cape Kennedy or you go to Baikonur. If you want uh, to go reach the highest possible energy, the place, the portal for that is at CERN. So CERN is the place where people from all over the planet gather to study the results of collision at the highest possible energy. That's one aspect. The other aspect is a humanistic aspect. Uh, CERN was made, uh, the idea of CERN was formulated in the early 1950s. And in 1954, 12 countries decided to found uh, CERN as a place where to heal the wounds of Europe after World War II, have the European scientists, which were very busy at uh, killing, devising ways to kill each other, the other side, civilians, soldiers, and try to heal all of that. And also to consolidate the Western knowledge uh, at, at the most advanced uh, level. So I think that th these two aspects that of planetary collaboration and they, let me give you, I mean, to me, the most striking example is you have people from all over the world. They can't agree what is the best band, music band. They can't agree on what is the best football team. And nevertheless, they succeed to build together a piece of equipment which requires an incredible compatibility. So you have one piece built in, the, in Michigan in the United States, one piece built in Israel, one piece built in Italy, and it all fits together while on nothing else they can agree, here they can agree. And I think that's unique to the place. It's really a lesson for the world. Amazing. So let's talk a little bit about um, some of CERN's most fascinating projects. You mentioned, you know, in 2012, that the CERN scientists were able to discover the Higgs particle, known, I think, also as the God particle. Um, were you part of that project, first of all? And second of all, what is it? Okay, so first of all, I'm a theoretical physicist. And I think I'm, act I'm actually paid not to enter a lab, because the moment <laughs> I enter a lab, things get wrong, go wrong. So I'm a theoretical physicist, and all the credit for the discovery goes to the experimental physicist. And um, it's a fantastic feat, to, a f unbelievable technological feat to be able to discover the Higgs particle. I will say before that from a theoretical point of view, already from the 60s of the last century, uh, one, so even before I, I, I went uh, uh, to university, it was already known that there should be a particle like the Higgs particle. And um, the fact, the difficult thing was to build a machine and to build the detectors, which will be able to find it. And a very realistic uh, example, a real to life example to explain how complicated it is and how fantastic a job the experimental physicists did is, 
Uh, imagine I'm taking you to the Negev and there is a desert storm and I'm telling you now what you need to do. You see all the grains of sand, they're hitting the eyes, it's not easy. Look at them and tell me if you find one of them which looks like a Magen David and report to me. And this is, a, this is the difficulty which one needs to surmount. That's a, a, a very good presentation of that. So, and, and what is the God particle? So what does that mean? Well, I, I wonder, tell me why when the name God appears, uh, you, you get excited. Uh, uh, it, in my opinion, it was a fantastic feat of public relations. Uh, that somebody called it the God particle. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that uh, all particles were made equal. <laughs> uh, if there is a God, then he or she surely uh, uh, all have equal place. Each particle has an equal place for them. Now the Higgs particle, uh, which could have been called the Braut and Glert Higgs particle, but became called the Higgs particle because Braut and Glert actually uh, had a role even earlier than Higgs in, in, uh, in this issue, is a particle which like every other, every particle has a role to play in, the, in this big show. And, and the role of, uh, of the Higgs is that it gives, uh, by the way it behaves, it is responsible for part of the mass that objects which have a mass and are not massless get, gain it. So it's partially responsible for the mass. Sometimes said that it's the soul responsible. That's not correct. There are other sources for the masses, but it is an important contributor to those particles which have a mass. And not all particles as we know have a mass. There are some particles which are massless. But for those who have a mass, the, the behavior of the Higgs is responsible for them having a mass. So again, to some extent. Uh -huh. Now, I read that CERN is working on generating a black hole. Is that right? Will CERN generate a black hole? No, that's not correct. Uh, actually, uh, when originally the LHC was about to turn on, uh, people were claiming that, uh, uh, that we would create a black hole there and that it would engulf the whole uh, Every, the planet Earth and who knows what else. So actually we, it reached the courts and people were saying not to allow CERN to create uh, a black hole. And uh, I'm telling you half jokingly that let's say an insurance company came and said, well, in this case, we have to increase your insurance. But then the management of CERN said, uh, of course, but where will you put this as a security that you pay us if, we, if the black hole uh, eats everything? In any case, uh, this was studied very seriously because such collisions are also done in the cosmos. So these energies, while they're the highest that human beings su succeeded to create, they are already in the universe, they appear. So one knows what can result. And uh, the possibility of creating a large black hole, which would be a danger, uh, was... Uh, Really, in science, you never say zero, but it, it was way, way smaller than your probability to have an accident when you cross the road. So, uh, so th this was mainly made a lot of noise and reached courts, but was never a target to produce black holes. Okay. So now I understand that physicists at CERN are seeking answers, though, to questions like, what is the universe made of or how did it start? Um, do you have any preliminary answers to share with us? Anything from your work that you think uh, helps to answer those questions? Well, my own, my own work is, is really studying the different properties of gravity. Now, if we look at the electromagnetic force, which uh, we couldn't have conducted this interview if there wouldn't be an electromagnetic force. So the electromagnetic force, we uh, all the time except that it's there and we know how to, uh, how to live uh, with that. Uh, but the things that I study are actually uh, the properties of gravity. And the properties 
of, we are very lucky. We live in a region where gravity is very, very weak. And let me exemplify that. So maybe when, when somebody goes on the weight and he sees or she sees the number, she, she doesn't feel that gravity is weak. Or when you try and jump uh, five meters high, you see you can't do it. And uh, so gravity, you feel gravity. But let me exemplify to you how weak gravity really is. So I'm holding this uh, cell phone. Uh -huh. And what, what would happen if I would let go? I'm assuming it would fall, probably break. It would fall, okay. But why would it fall? Would it fall because it's attracted to my legs here on the chair? Would it fall because it's attracted uh, to the floor in my room? Who is responsible for attracting and for the fall of the iPhone if I leave it? It's the I whole know. planet Earth. Okay. All the planet Earth together. This is the most strong coalition. There are no forces. There are no Republicans and Democrats which fight each other. Everybody together has a coherent effect and they all of them attract this iPhone. So, and if you go to the moon, as you know, because the moon is much smaller, then the whole moon would attract this iPhone with much less force, and therefore it, it would fall down with a smaller acceleration. Now, the, but I'm actually holding it. What holds it? I'm holding yeah. it here with a few fingers. Okay. So with almost, full, almost correct to say that it's just the electromagnetic force which is in within my fingers, I am the David and I can beat the whole Goliath, which is planet Earth. So if, if I with a few fingers can stop planet Earth, all of it, attracting this iPhone, it tells you how gravity is really weak. And we as human beings are very fortunate that we live in an environment where gravity is weak, otherwise you would be torn to pieces. But in the beginning of the, in the, of the universe or around black holes and so on, gravity is strong. And what happens when gravity is strong? What are the possibilities? This is the type of research that I'm involved in. That's so fascinating. Um, so let's take a few minutes also just to talk about the $10 billion large, um, am I saying it correctly, Hadron Collider, the LHC. Um, what is it? Why is it called that? Well, it's large because it's 27 kilometers in circumference. So uh, that accounts for large. Now, everything is relative because the, last, uh, the next machine one is contemplating is 100 kilometers circumference. So the LHC should lose eventually its L. Because... Right, they have to rename it. <laughs> okay, why collider? Collider, because uh, we are in a, in a way the intellectual input in studying the structure of nature is what the same input that a baby to which you give a, a toy uses. He wants to understand how the toy is built. He's curious, the baby, or she's curious. So what does she do? She breaks it. And if she wants to see smaller and smaller parts, she needs to break it with more and more energy. So we are interested to see what matter is built out of. So we need to take pieces, small pieces of matter. We collide them with each other at the highest energy we know to make. And then we observe what came out. And this will teach us the structure of matter. So the collisions are the C and that's a collider. Now, what is a hadronic? H is for hadronic. What does the hadronic stand for? So there are several types of basic forces. There is one basic force, which is gravity, which again, affects our everyday life as we discussed before. There is electromagnetism, which affects every aspect of our life. Then there is a force which is called the weak force. And th that is a force uh, which is responsible for radioactivity for one element transforming to another element. And that's called the weak force. Even though usually when you think about radioactivity, you don't think the word weak doesn't come to your mind, but it's weak and we call the weak force. And then there is a force which is called either the strong force or the colored force. 
which is the force between the components of a nucleus, for example. So a nucleus has in it protons and neutrons. The force between them is a nuclear force. Protons and neutrons are built out of other particles called quarks and gluons. And the force between them is called either the colored force or the strong force. Now, hadrons participate in all four, four interactions. Not all particles can do all four interactions. Everybody does gravity. So, some do gravity and the weak force. Some do gravity, the weak force, and electromagnetism. And some do all the forces. And these particles are called hadrons. And the proton in particular is such a particle. So the things which one collides at LHC are basically most of the time protons and sometimes objects which are composed of many protons and neutrons and they are called nuclei. So that's, the, and they are called hadrons. So that's large 27 kilometers hadrons because they play with all forces, they do all forces and collider because in, inside there are collisions. Interesting. Okay, now what else are CERN scientists trying to do? Is there anything else that we should uh, think about or know about that I didn't mention? Probably. <laughs> Give me one more interesting, uh, interesting project. Look, the, the, the people working at CERN want to understand how the universe is built up. And there are many ways uh, to do that. The way in which CERN specializes and is the best in the world and the highest has the highest energy possible and is the largest in the world is collision of hadrons. But from time to time at CERN, one also collides objects which are called leptons. There, are, for example, an electron is a lepton and the a lepton doesn't get to do uh, strong forces. It's only allowed to do gravity, weak forces, and electromagnetic forces. And there are objects called neutrinos, and neutrinos are not allowed to do electromagnetic force and colored force. They're only allowed to do gravity and the weak force. And at CERN, what does experiments of all in all of these? And then there, there are other, there is antimatter, which is always something which captures imagination and there are experiments at CERN done on antimatter, and the list is, is, very, is very long. But okay, the, flagship, the flagship is, at this stage, the Large Hadron Collider. Okay. Well, thank you so much, you know, for having this conversation with me, taking this journey with us at the Jerusalem Post so we could get a little bit of a behind the scenes look at really what is one of the largest and most respective centers of scientific research. Um, and we wish you a lot of luck in your new role beginning in January. I would like, can I take one more moment? Of course. I don't know how you'll cut it, but I'll, I, I want to take a, 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 sure. another moment. Uh, you know, there is a movie Tarzan and the Son of Tarzan, or uh -huh. maybe you're too young to have heard of, uh, no, no. <laughs> of such things. So th there is a, a, another thing in which I was heavily involved, which is a project in the Middle East, which uh, follows very similar ideas as CERN. Now in the Middle East, we have enough collisions. So it's not a collider. It's actually called a light source because definitely the Middle East needs some bright light shed on it. And in it, electrons turn around and they produce radiation, which is like a microscope. So it's like, these are very involved X-rays. And it, this machine is built in Jordan. It's called Sesame. It was recognized and the prize was given to the, the founders by the American Association for the Advancement of Science. And the members which participate are not the usual bedfellows. You, they are, this is done at the governmental level. It's the state of Israel, it's Palestine, it's Turkey, it's the Cypriot, it's a Greek part of, of Cyprus, it's Egypt, it's Jordan, it's Iran and it's Pakistan. And 
we are all working, we all work together uh, to build this, uh, this machine, which is now working in Jordan. And th there were Israeli scientists already who did experiments there. So I thought it's important for your readers and for viewers uh, to know that there is such a thing in our region. It exists where people work together. That is really special. And is that something that's going to always stay in Jordan or will that move from country to country? You can't move the, the machine. And okay. Jordan was chosen because it's a country, a, it's near to us, so it's, it's very comfortable, but it's a country to which all participants can have access. And in, in, in this day and age, okay, at this day and age. So other countries were either too far from Israel or not realistic. So that's... Wow. Well, that certainly uh, ends the interview on a high note with a lot of light. Uh, I really appreciate you adding that in. Um, thank you so much, and uh, I hope you have a great night. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.